This is part two of a tutorial series on Vroid Studio, a free anime character creator from Pixiv. This deals primarily with the face editor. If you want to get a general overview, you can take a look at the first video in the series. Please keep in mind that the program is under active development, so your version may vary a bit from this video. So let's get started. The first editor Vroid Studio defaults to is the face editor. It's always accessible by clicking on the leftmost tab along the top of the screen. As I said before, this screen is separated into three sections, the tool panel on the left, the camera panel in the middle, and the property panel on the right. Also, as we covered, you can pan, zoom, and rotate the model in the camera panel. A thing to note is you can also move the edges of these panels by clicking on the frame and dragging them left or right. You will notice at the top of the tool panel we have two tabs called Design and Texture. We'll dive into the Texture tools later, but for now, under Design, you can see that it defaults to All, and shows all the sliders on the property panel. You can limit which design feature you want to see by selecting an option in the Tools panel. For example, Eyes will just give us attributes that alter the eyes. You will notice that all the sliders default to zero. You can move each one for a desired effect. The values range between 0 and 1, and sliding the value all the way to the left will always be the default shape. You can also click on the value box and manually type in the value you want. Be careful though, when trying to change the values manually, they are not constrained and can go below 0 and above 1. If you're not careful, you can make some pretty grotesque figures that don't animate properly. Clicking on the texture tab will open up many more tools. Here you will see the screen has been rearranged with a few more sections. We have the texture selection panel, our camera panel, the UV panel, and properties panel. The camera view works exactly the same here, and you can once again adjust the panel sizes. Let's go ahead and explore the UV panel. The UV panel shows a bitmap texture of what will be placed on parts of the model. It's sometimes called the skin, but more appropriately, it's called the UV map. U and V are used to describe the left, right, and up, down axis of the 2D map. The reason why X and Y are not used is because X, Y, and Z are used to describe the locations of the 3D model in 3D space. Other modeling applications use the term UV as well, so it's a good habit to pick up. There are eight textures that are used on the face. Skin is the flush texture. Mouth is the inside of the mouth, along with the teeth and tongue. Scleras are the whites of the eyes. Eyeline is the area where you would apply eyeliner for the model. This is just behind the eyelashes and includes the lower waterline, but does not really include the whole eyelid. Eyebrows are above the eyes. Irises are the color bits of the eyes, including the pupil. And the eye highlights are the shiny reflections on the eye surface itself. The skin, eyeline, eyelashes, and eyebrows have two handy shaders with a color picker. Under the color picker, you can optionally use these RGB sliders to get more exact values of red, green, and blue, or select a color using the eyedropper. We can demonstrate the shaders with the skin texture as they are easiest to see. You can think of the base color as a modifier to the UV map. In a pinch, it lets you change the skin tone of the character without having to redraw the actual face. The shade color is the color of the shadow. Technically, what's going on with the shaders is a little bit more complex than that. To better understand how they work, I'll elaborate a little further. Each Vroid model comes with its own controllable light source. There'll be more on this when we get to the camera and export tab, but for now think of the light as a lamp that always points to the model from some direction. 
The light always goes directly from the lamp to the model, and this is called the key light. If the key light is white, it will not affect the color of what it's pointing at. In the real world, if you were to put a colored piece of plastic called a gel in front of this light, then the key light will change the color reflecting off the subject. Put a red gel in front of the light, and it will color the model red. So the base color is the color of the light coming from the lamp. In this case, the base color only affects the color of the model part or object that we're editing and not the whole model, nor does it change the color of the UV map proper. The shade color is the color of the bounce light. This is the color of the light that missed the model, bounced off of something, and was reflected back. Changing the color of the reflected light will change the color of the shadows. This is why in photography you'll see someone holding a reflector. This is to control the bounce light. You can imagine the shade value changing the color of the reflector. There is also a third backlight called the rim light that is controlled by the general editor. We'll look at that in another video. Next, on the texture palette, are the UV maps and layer management. By default, each texture map is made up of three UV maps layered one on top of another. You can think of each layer as a transparency that can see through to the layer below. Clicking on the plus will make a new empty layer called Layer. You can then shuffle this layer around using the arrows on the left. Let's look at the bottommost layer and work upwards. The guide is a special layer that we'll examine last. Here I've turned off the two upper layers and only the default image layer is showing. This is the out of the box UV map that's placed on the character. It's not really advised to draw on this layer and should be used as a base layer from which you work from. Now I'm going to turn off the default image layer and turn on the layer layer. You'll see the face turn black and the UV map change to a checkerboard. You can imagine the checkerboard as being the absolute bottom or floor layer of the stack. The checkerboard is telling us that this layer is transparent and we can see through it all the way to the bottom. The face is black because there are no colored pixels to map to the model, so black is the default. This is the layer that you would normally modify. Turning on the guides will just show you the guidelines, which are the polygon borders of the model. You can see that it's semi-transparent, and we can somewhat see the checkerboard underneath. The face is still black though. When I turn on the default image again, you can see the guides are on the right, but don't show up on the model on the left. That's because the guide layer never shows up on the model. The guide visibility is only reflected on the UV map. When you right-click on a layer, it will show you some options. Toggle visibility is what I've been using to hide the layers. When a layer is hidden, you'll have an eye icon next to the layer showing its visibility is disabled. The next option is Toggle Alpha Lock. This disables our ability to alter that layer and is reflected by a lock icon. Duplicate will duplicate the layer, and remove will delete the layer. Import will load a texture from your hard drive. It must be the same size as the UV map you're working with. Export will save the current layer as a ping file. You can then open this layer in another editing program to edit. If we did some exporting and importing, we can show the guide map on the model. First, we'll export the guide by right-clicking and pressing Export. We will name this lines.png. Next, we'll right-click on Layer and select Duplicate. Then we can right-click on the new layer and select Import. You have to import on a new layer because importing on the default layer will erase it. Select your lines.ping file and load it into the UV map. You'll now see that the map is showing the polygons on the model. If you right-click on this layer and toggle visibility, you can hide your new layer. As of this recording, the ability to rename the layer is not in the program yet. Finally, saving the best for last, you can also use Vroid Studio to draw directly on the UV map or on the model and examine your edit in situ. Drawing tools on the camera panel is how you select your tool to draw. 
Not all these tools are functioning at the moment. For now, we'll work with the pencil and the eraser tool here. Selecting the pencil tool, we can select what color to draw using the brush color on the right. You have the same color picking options as the shaders on the left. Under the colors, we can choose the shape of our brush. We'll use the default. Now we make sure that our blink layer is selected and we can draw directly on the UV. The lines we draw will be reflected on the 3D model. Drawing on the 3D model will show the changes on the UV map. To prevent any drawing on the current layer, you can lock it using the aforementioned alpha lock toggle. We can erase our drawing by selecting on the eraser tool and scrubbing over our artwork in either window. The tool up here is the symmetry tool. You can use this to update both sides of the UV map at the same time. Another thing to note is if you're drawing using a pressure sensitive pen or input device, Vroid Studio will support it. The size mapping controls how big the paintbrush is depending on where you're drawing. UV will try and keep the size the same relative to the UV map and world will try and keep it relative to the topography. You will notice this the most where polygons are a bit bunched up, say like on the nose. Lastly, we have parameters for brush width, and opacity. Under the brush properties, we have some options for the current working layer. This includes opacity and composition mode. The composition mode has 24 different color blending options. Blending modes are a little bit out of the scope of this tutorial, so to learn more about how these blending modes work, I'll link to a very encompassing Wikipedia article that shows examples along with the mathematics involved. Normal is what's most often used. As a final tip before closing out this lesson, while drawing on the model, you may need to get into some hard to reach areas, for example, inside the mouth, or applying eye makeup. If we sneak into the camera exporter section, you can pose the face to make it easier to get access or to check if anything is looking strange. This about wraps up the face tutorial and all its options. In the next lesson, we'll tackle the hair editor and all that that encompasses. Thanks for watching!